So good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to IRAJ. It's Institute of Research and Journals. Today we uh, have international uh, virtual conference. The topic is recent advancement in power system operation and control. So today I would like to uh, welcome uh, Professor Dr. K. Ravi. He's from Department of Electrical Engineering, VIT University, Vellore. So you can start. So you can start now, sir. Okay. Sir. Okay. So good evening to all. Uh, welcome to this webinar, uh, Institute of Research and Journals organizing an international virtual conference on recent advancement in power system operation and control. Myself, uh, Dr. K. Ravi, Associate Professor, School of Electrical Engineering, VAT University, Vello. So, first, I would like to give a brief introductions about the evolution of electric power system. Then what are all the recent advancements in power system generation side and transmission side and distribution side and utilization type side. So normally there are four important components of the power system networks. First one is the power generation. Second one is the power transmission. Third one is the power distribution. Fourth one is the power utilization. So how to generate the power? Then what are all the recent advancement technological uh, controllers involving in the power generation equipments? Then what is a transmission? What is the use of the transmission? Then what is the use of HVDC transmission? What are the major projects available in that HVDC uh, in our India? The more details about the converter control, inverter control, reactive power control, HVDC controls, we are going to discuss in this HVDC control. The next one is the uh, distribution side. Normally, in the distribution side, uh, nowadays we are moving towards the microgrid and the smart grid. So, so, a lot of DGs are there. If there is any remote areas or remote control areas, uh, those who have not um, accessed the uh, power uh, because of the thickly populated, uh, uh, the thickly forest area, then we have to uh, recommend the uh, DG or uh, microgrid. So in this uh, webinar, we are going to uh, discuss in detail about what are all the recent advancement in power system operation and control. So evolution of electric power system in 1870, the commercial use of electricity uh, has uh, begun uh, in use in late 1870s when lamps are used, lighthouse illumination for street lighting purposes. The first complete power system comprises a generator, cable, fuse, meter, and loads was built by Thomas Alva Edison in that uh, year of 1982. The historic fuel station in New York City, which began operation in September 1882. This was the DC system consisting of a steam engine driven by DC generator supplying 100 kilowatt power to the 59 consumer with an area roughly 1.5 kilometer radius. This is the first uh, um, electric power uh, uh, distribution. The load, uh, uh, they were used in incandescent lamps, which uh, he was supplied at uh, 110 volt through a UG cable. Within a few years, similar, the way similar systems were in operation in most large cities throughout the world. In 1884, development of the motors by Frank Starr in 1884, motor loads were added to such system. So they were used the uh, DC system, but uh, DC systems normally have some limitation and demerits uh, because if you want to deliver a DC power, only you can, uh, at the time they were uh, used only for short distances because of you have to maintain the I square R loss uh, uh, minimization. Then voltage drop also, uh, is not acceptable limits by. Uh, these are all the DC limitations at the time. So voltage levels had to be very high for long distances for transmission. So these such voltages, high voltages were acceptable for power generation and consumption of power. Therefore, a convenient means for voltage transformers become very, very necessary and important. The development of the transformer in the year of uh, 19... Uh, uh, 20, I think, the transformer and AC transmission uh, line L. God and G.D. Gibbs and Paris translate uh, to uh, 
uh, they have initiated uh, for the ac electric power transmission george westinghouse secured rights to this development in the us so in 1886 william stanley and associate of westinghouse developed and tested commercial practical transformer at the time the uh, ac distribution system for 150 lamps at great barrington massachusetts in by 1888 nikola tesla had several patent on ac motors generators transformers transmission lines etc so with the development of polypy systems by nikola tesla the ac system became even more attractive so in 1889 the north america was at, uh, first the wilmette falls and portland it was a single phase line transmitting power at um, 400 uh, 4 kv over a distance of 21 kilometers 21 kilometers westinghouse bought the patents to this early invention and they formed the basis of the present day ac system in the 1890s there was considerable controversy over whether the ac is the best one or dc is the best one at that time there, there was a very huge uh, controversy between the thomas alva edison and nikola tesla edison as uh, forward for dc and westinghouse forward for ac then you know automatically nowadays we people were started to using the ac systems because of the uh, minimization of the losses by the turn of the century the ac system had worn out over the dc system for the following advantages the low voltage levels can be easily transformed in ac system if you have a voltage the transformer you can increase or decrease the voltage level moreover the flexibility of uh, different voltages for generation transmission and consumption also uh, using the transformer you can you can increase and decrease the voltage level you can use 11 kv 11 kv to 232 kv or uh, 230 kv or for, uh, uh, 110 kv whatever the voltage level you need you can increase or decrease the voltage level that is why it is very flexibility system ac generators are much simpler than dc generators ac motors are much simpler than the dc motors if you go for dc then we have to convert uh, ac to dc then we need a commutator or uh, rectifiers so there are uh, some uh, sparking issues are there so that's why uh, people are uh, using nowadays ac system the first three phase a line 2300 volt 12 km line in southern california around this time ac was chosen at niagara falls because dc was not practical for transmitting the power to buffalo about 30 km away so this decision ended the ac versus dc controversy and establishes history of the ac system in the early period of ac transmission frequency was not standardized so at the time they were used 25 50 60 125 and 133 hertz uh, they were used this proposed problem of interconnections even the 60 hertz was adopted at standard in north america many other countries in uh, india we are using the 50 hertz only okay the next need for transmitting large amount of power over a very long distances created an incentive use of the higher voltage levels in earlier ac uh, systems they were used 12 kv 44 kv 60 kv and 78 kv this uh, increased 160 kv in 1992 220 kv in 1923 287 kv in 1935 330 kv in 1953 500 kv in 1965 735 kv in 1966 765 kv in 1969 in united states 1200 kv recent years they are in india also we have started uh, and uh, successfully tested the very high voltage transmission 1200 kv okay so so to avoid the uh, some of the problems uh, here So the industry has standardized voltage levels 110 kV, 115, 132, 138, 161, 220, and 230 kV for extra high voltage cables, lines. Then 345, 400, 500, 765, 765, and now people have started to using that 1200 kV for extra high voltage and ultra high voltage transmission lines. 
with the development of mercury arc walls in 1950s high voltage hvdc transmission system become economical in special situation so hvdc system transmission is very attractive for transmission of large blackouts of over a very long distances what is the need for hvdc transmissions so if you compare the ehv ac and uh, ehv ac and hv uh, dc there are many advantages are there so uh, in that ehv ac you can uh, transmit the very high voltages using the transformer but in hv dc the frequency is nil so you cannot use the transformer you cannot transmit the over voltages very long distances but in that hv dc we have a lot of advantages are there as you uh, uh, earlier pointed out the recent advancement so in the recent advancement in that ehv uh, dc hv high voltage direct current transmission systems nowadays we have um, started to use the sophisticated power electronic devices igbt so um, and mosfet mct metal oxide semiconductor uh, and igbt insulated gate bipolar transmission system and thyristor silicon control rectifier so you can uh, uh, increase the number of uh, uh, thyristor walls and bridge walls the without uh, leading any problems then you can operate our converters and uh, inverter controls that we have different types of the controllers are there 12 pulse converter 24 pulse converters 34 pulse inverters controllers uh, so we have many types of the controller uh, converters and inverters are there the converters and the inverters controls are also very very important role in that uh, hvdc transmission system that's why in the recent uh, scenario the many uh, uh, industry and many utilities they have uh, uh, started to uh, <coughs> construct the high voltage dc substations they are using uh, uh, the modern uh, smart grid equipments for uh, relay so wireless relay and uh, wireless uh, metering and advanced metering of the smart grid and ied intelligent electronic devices of uh, many intelligent electronic devices are involving in the smart grid also so if you take out the hvdc transmission systems so main components of the hvdc transmission system we have sending and receiving end in between that we have the converters 12 pulse converters 24 pulse converters in the converters also variety of types as then converters then transformer transformer to the uh, we have to convert ac to dc then this dc voltage we have to transmit uh, to the various load centers using the different types of the poles if you take the hvdc transmission link we have different types of the poles are there bipolar monopolar homopolar back to back then multi terminal hvdc terminal station then in that hvdc terminal station we have the electrodes electrode normally we are using for the to uh, conductor so to carry the more power especially the if you use the hvdc you can transmit the very high power over a very high long distances if you have if you want to transmit the more power over a very long distances especially about 2000 km if you use the hvdc without any the synchronization or any stability issues you can transmit uh, the power at the same time you can control the power also that is the one of the best advantages in hvdc you can control the power flow in the bidirectional power flow that is also very very important one then next we are going to uh, talk about that hvdc uh, controllers reactive power control and uh, smoothing reactor the smoothing reactors normally we are connecting with that hvdc substation this smoothing reactor the functions if there is any harmonics while converting ac to dc so you will be getting lot of harmonics then if the harmonics is developing when automatically the um, uh, power quality will be reduced to avoid the power quality we have to use the smoothing reactors once if you use the smoothing reactor then automatically you can minimize the power quality and harmonic issues also then uh, so many filters are there in hvdc uh, substations also ac filter and dc filter you can filter the unwanted harmonics and other than the fundamental frequency also you can uh, mitigate the harmonics also so there are many advantages are there in that uh, hvdc um, uh, substations so 
connects the crossover points beyond with DC transmission may become a competitive alternative to AC transmission is around 500 kilometers for overhead lines and 50 kilometers for underground and uh, submarine cables. So HVDC also provides an asynchronous link for system with different nominal frequencies. HVDC preferable where AC interconnection would be impractical. So as I told you earlier, if you have a HVDC system without any frequency or stability issue, you can operate your two systems. Sending end, you can operate with 50 gate. Receiving end, you can operate with 60 gate. Different frequencies, but we are operating with the same that HVDC line. So this HVDC main advantage is you can avoid the um, synchronization stability issues. That is the main advantage of the HVDC. Then in um, the first HVDC transmission built uh, in that um, mainland, Gotland, were interconnected by 96 kilometer submarine cable. This system was uh, mercury arc wall. At the time, uh, um, only the all walls, there were no uh, IGBT or MCT or uh, MOSFET. In earlier days, uh, in 1954, uh, they were used mercury arc walls. Nowadays, we have recent sophisticated equipment is there. IGBT we have, MCT we have, thyristors walls are there. Then we, we, we can transmit very high over voltages up to 2,000 to 3,000, 3,000 to 5,000. You can transmit very high over the power over a very long distances. With the advent of the thyristor wall converters, HVDC transmission become more attractive. The first application of HVDC system, use of the thyristor wall was a reverse scheme of Brunkweiss and Quebec 320 megawatt back-to-back -back converter interconnection. With the cost and size of the conversion equipment decreasing, its reliability increasing, there have been a steady increase in the use of HVDC transmission. So interconnection of the utilities, we can improve the power system performance, then we can operate our system the economical manner. That is also very, very important and uh, most important point. Uh, while if you take the any power system uh, network or power system transmission or distribution or utilization, the economically we have to uh, generate the power at the same time economically, how we can economically distribute the power to the various countries, how to save the money, that is very important. So a lot of numerical uh, algorithm and computational intelligent techniques have been developed Many researchers have done the many works in that uh, optimal power flow, how to minimize economic dispatch, uh, how to uh, minimize the fuel cost, especially for thermal power plant. We are investing crores of uh, billions of uh, uh, dollar uh, for purchasing of the coal because 70 percentage of the power generation throughout the India, we are uh, getting the um, uh, power from uh, coal-based power plant. <laughs> this coal-based power plant, we have to invest the coal. The, uh, the money we have to invest for coal. We have to purchase the coal. So how to minimize this uh, fuel cost or coal cost? That is the one of the important uh, uh, topics. Economic dispatch. So introduction of large size unit in that uh, 210 megawatt, 500 megawatt, 1000 megawatt. Then how this EHV, AC networks are involving. Then people nowadays, in earlier days, they were used the network simulator. Now we have sophisticated softwares are there. If you have 100,000 buses, what is the voltage level? What is the current level? What is the power angle? What is the real power, reactive power? Everything within the fraction of the second, you can calculate the uh, voltages of the concern load, power flow, uh, angle, and um, reactive power, power factor, and uh, apparent power. Everything you can calculate within the fraction of second using the modern tools such as the MAT Power, MATLAB, PSCAT, many softwares are there. Then HVDC systems and we have the compensators. So compensator is the big topic, EHV, AC and DC. Uh, EHV, AC systems uh, for flexible AC transmission systems. We are using the tax devices, flexible AC transmission system for power transfer capability improvement, and reliability improvement to maintain a voltage balance, to maintain a, a balancing current, to maintain a power quality, to mitigate the harmonics, to improvement of the power transfer capability, to improve the stability, to improve the voltage stability. Many advantages are there using the stunt and series compensator. 
So that's why we are moving towards the fact devices. In the fact devices also, the lot of more than one lakh research papers available in the Google. If you want to do any project or any uh, research in this topic, many uh, fact devices are there. You can you include these fact devices into that many recent uh, computer algorithm, computational algorithm, uh, optimization algorithm, uh, the genetic algorithm, PSO, and uh, double search algorithm, and uh, seed algorithm. Many algorithms are there. Many researchers have started to using this algorithm for minimization, uh, optimization purpose. This has created a very large system of enormous explicitly. As far as HVDC concerns, HVDC actually this is the power electronic components. You can control one or more parameters, P equal to V1, V2 by X into sin del. So that is the power angle equation. If you want to control the power, you can uh, improve the voltage, you can increase the power. If you want to control the power, if you want to increase, you can reduce the X. If you want to control the del, if you uh, uh, increase the angle, then automatically power transfer capability will be increased. So we have different types of the parameters are there. So in the um, uh, using this parameter, with the help of the power electronic devices, we are increasing the enhancement of the transmission power capability. That is actually the facts definition. Next, what is the different types of the facts? So based on the connections, we have four types. One is the shunt fact devices, series fact devices, combination of shunt and series, combination of series and series fact devices. So all the facts devices, mainly important two things, inductor or capacitor. So these uh, facts devices, we are trying to improve the regulation to enhance the power transfer capability. At the same, same time, we have to maintain the power quality also. So power quality is the major issue in our recent days. The peoples are need uninterrupted, regulated, uninterrupted, continuity of 24 hour power supply. How to give the good power supply to the consumer? We have to satisfy our consumer. They need 24 into 7 power supply. So they won't accept any power cut or any blackout. If you have any problems, they won't accept it. So they are ready to uh, get the power even for uh, one unit, uh, some 10 rupees or 15 rupees also. Some of the uh, peoples are get ready. So they need only the uh, continuity of the power supply without any interest. So that's why in the nowadays, uh, the peoples are moving to, through the smart grid. So smart grid main uh, uh, advantage is the conventional grid is there, smart grid is there. Conventional grid and smart grid so smart grid is, if there is any fault, self-feeding property is there. But in the conventional grid, if there is any fault, the single line to ground fault, double line to ground fault, transformer fault, to short circuit fault or lightning fault, any fault, it may be a stunt fault or series fault, the attender or the persons, they have to uh, carry out the manually, they have to rectify the fault, then it will take some time. But if you use this smart grid, without any time uh, delay, it's uh, automatically self-healing properties are there. Then moreover, if you start to use this smart grid, then you'll be getting good quality power supply without any interruption. You can maintain your constant voltage. You can maintain your balancing current throughout the phases. You can maintain your power factor, unity. Then everything will be paka. You can maintain your frequency also. No issues at all. But in the, at, at the same time, uh, you, you, if you use the uh, smart grid, you can maintain continuously power quality as well as reduction of the cost. Power management, power savings also is there. Then if you once started to use the smart grid, automatically your electricity bill will be automatically reduced. Power consumption will be reduced. So I have more than in my... Uh, if you take any homes, we have uh, um, AC, uh, fridge, uh, computer, laptop, or um, five to six fan, many uh, CFL lamps. So uh, based on your requirement, with the help of the remote control, you can turn on or turn off your system. So you are, now your house is located in Chennai, but you are in uh, Delhi. You can operate your... Uh, uh, electrical appliances through your mobile. We have the sophisticated um, controllers are there. Sensors already introduced. Many sophisticated smart sensors already used. 
you can control so you can avoid unnecessary the without people some fan is continuously uh, uh, rotating then what is the use automatically you will be getting more electricity charge then how to reduce then you can save the electricity bill and the cost so people nowadays started to use the smart grid moreover many students many uh, pg and scholars uh, are using uh, the this smart grid for in that small transmission distribution power management side also okay this is also very important topic uh, i would like to uh, thank the i uh, institute of research and um, journal uh, corporations especially the conference coordinator uh, mr isaac i would like to thank the irag management and uh, coordinator isaac sir uh, given the uh, wonderful opportunity to interact with the uh, participant thank you very much sir thank you thank you sir thank you for your valuable time sir thank you thank you so one minute sir thank you